Silent reading is a natural activity in today's literate societies. For some of us, it's the favorite time of the day when we cozy up with a book, a magazine, or an electronic device and enjoy reading an article or a story. Sometimes we read silently as a way to focus and getting ready for a meeting or a test. It's hard to imagine that there was a time when silent reading did not exist. Silent reading is a private and solitary activity that has evolved drastically through history. In the ancient civilizations, reading was done for manuscripts that were in the form of scrolls. The word volume, which originates from the Latin word volumen, means something rolled up. In these societies, it was the profession of scribes who wrote and copied writings by hand. Later on, during the first two centuries AD, the scroll was still used for literary works in the Western world. Eventually, manuscript production was shifted to codex, which is what we refer to as a book. Codex was handwritten, but it was more compact, economical, and easier for referencing. In ancient times, reading was usually oral. Written words were intended to be read out loud, either in groups or individually. In the ancient Greek, the Olden Egyptian, and the early Roman societies, silent reading was out of the ordinary, even though some occurrences can be traced to those times. It is said that in the 4th century BC, Alexander the Great read silently a letter received from his mother, an act that had puzzled his soldiers. Another story relates to 63 BC, when Julius Caesar, standing in the Senate next to his opponent, read in silence a note sent to him by his opponent's sister. However, the first recorded instance of silent reading in the Western literature is in the Confessions of St. Augustine, written in 394 AD. St. Augustine writes about St. Ambrose, who was the Bishop of Milan and a popular speaker of the time. Talking about when Ambrose was reading alone in his study, St. Augustine writes, When he read, his eyes scanned the page and his heart sought out the meaning, but his voice was silent and his tongue was still. St. Augustine was astonished by the way Ambrose was reading, but this is how we see silent readers today, even though it was a strange act back then. So what happened that introduced societies to silent reading? In his book, Space Between Words, The Origins of Silent Reading, Paul Sanger explains some factors that instigated this change. In ancient writings and in the time of Augustine, words were not separated and they were composed into continuous texts. There was no use of punctuation or upper and lower case letters and reading these continuous texts was not an easy task and it required practice. That's why mistakes were common. Relocating material in these manuscripts was not easy. The verbalization of the writings in oral cultures had an oral mnemonic pattern that made it easy for recall. Therefore, memorization of these texts was encouraged. Sanger states that the introduction of punctuations and word separation initiated the development of silent reading. In the ancient civilizations, reading was exclusive to a small elite group and the larger population was illiterate. Sanger writes that the elitist mentality of the ancient world did not possess the desire to make reading easier. With few people being able to read, public readings were common practice. We still use some expression that relate to those ancient practices, such as when we say, this text doesn't sound right, meaning that it's not well written. Use of punctuations and the separation of words and sentences occurred very slowly. Before silent reading began, the scribes would read out the text while copying or writing manuscripts. The scriptorium, which was the room where the scribes worked, was filled with a dull murmuring. 
It was during the Middle Ages that silent reading began. Starting in the 5th century, scribes started producing manuscripts with spaces. Celtic priests who were transcribing from Latin without having a good knowledge of the language started separating words while copying. This led to copying and reading the text silently. Over the next couple of centuries, this novelty spread to other European countries. After the 7th century, use of dashes and points, equivalent to today's comma, semicolon and point, were being used. There was now more attention given to aesthetics of the text. Illuminated manuscripts were created where the drawing and images accompanying the text were intended for individual readers. Eventually, by the 12th century, silent reading was widespread and there were no more murmuring monks. The greater legibility of text had a major impact on reading. It increased the speed of reading and allowed for silent reading, which turned reading into an individual activity. Reading silently created an unrestricted relationship between the reader and the text. It allowed the reader to make comparisons from memory and internalize the reading. It gave the reader the opportunity to reflect on the text and form an opinion of his or her own. At first, silent reading was limited to those who were literate, but this changed eventually as literacy became more widespread. Scholarly communities were growing, and silent reading became central for readers who were interested in theology, law and science, and in understanding technical concepts. With the evolution of silent reading, new types of manuscripts were produced, and quiet studying became prevalent. Group readings of manuscripts gave their place to the privacy of silent reading. Some extremists were guarded against silent reading, and they claimed that it would allow daydreaming. Christianity also saw another danger in silent reading, as it allowed private communication between the book and the reader. Silent reading grew even bigger with the invention of printing press by Gutenberg around 1440 AD. Smaller printed books were easier to carry, and it became more common to own and read books privately. Printing, which became widespread in the 15th century, removed some existing inconveniences and offered better cost, smaller book sizes, and easier access. It therefore allowed the growth of personal and private reading, which is a characteristic of the modern society. As print became more prevalent and more people became literate, access to printed books increased. Readers were now able to select the text they wanted to read. Printed books were cheaper than manuscripts, so a new audience emerged, and now public was able to read books for themselves and form their own opinion. It encouraged critical thinking. printing standardized the text and allowed indexing and easier access to content. Printed texts were easier to read than manuscripts. The effects of the greater legibility of print were massive and led to the development of new styles of writing. With the shift to silent reading, there was less and less need for public readers and a sense of individualism rose. Writers started modifying their writing style and the narrator was now embedded in the text. This eventually gave way to the birth of the novel. Eventually, silent reading infiltrated the education system as well. During 17th and 18th centuries, memorization and recitation had a high place in education. But throughout time, the benefits of silent reading were noted, and students were encouraged to read silently to develop reading skills. Silent reading for leisure and independent reading became educational tools that are regarded as improving comprehension, vocabulary level, writing skills, and enthusiasm for reading. Reading has evolved vastly throughout history. Starting from a limited number of elite literate people and public readers, reading became an individual and private activity with the growth of silent reading. This shift nurtured critical thinking and impacted writing styles. 
the introduction of word space and punctuation, and eventually the birth of printing press changed reading from an oral activity to a visual and private one.